Welcome to Digital Asset News, take your top stories in crypto and break it down to bite-sized pieces. Today, just as the thumbnail suggests, Ethereum whales are doing this. And newsflash, they are accumulating at a massive rate. And it's so big, it's actually even shocking to me. So we're going to take a look at the story behind the story. Or let's take a look at JP Morgan, what they think about this Bitcoin ETF and, and uh, what is going on as far as the price appreciation. I think they're a little bit off here. Also, we'll take a look at Gensler's rationale as to why he approved it. And then we're going to take a look at uh, a nice little story where uh, Michael Burry is talking about how he is not shorting cryptocurrency and he's actually invested into it. So we'll take a look at those four stories, but first take a look what's going on into the market. So today it is Thursday. It's a beautiful day. And uh, we've got some... Uh Pretty good, nice, decent appreciation or price appreciation going on. So market caps around 2.6, somewhere around there, trillion, 2.64, depending on where you look at. And uh, Bitcoin's down just a little bit, about 4% in 24 hours. But look, we had a massive run, so uh, I'll take it. But the daily sentiment is still good, 68 out of 100. Uh, daily sentiment for uh, I mean, just the market in general is about 45. And actually, the reason I think why the Bitcoin is actually going down is because it's flowed into uh, a couple of uh, of uh, big players as far as altcoins. So Ethereum is uh, 4,100. Binance Coin is, is still down a little bit, but still a little bit there. Cardano, not too much. Solana is the big winner, 12%. Look at that price, almost at 183. I had a price prediction of $200 and it's already... Uh, blown through that before, so it'll hit that and can go up uh, even farther. Polkadot, Terra, 3% for Avalanche, Chainlink, and down the line. So a little bit of uh, money is going into the alts, which makes a lot of sense. And also, let's take a look at the projected range for if you're a big uh, uh, investor, we're using Trade the Chain for sentiment analysis. So uh, take a look at these uh, these tokens because these might uh, blow up in the next hour or so. FTX, 0x, Unibright, Near Protocol, and Orchid. Also, the Sandbox and Chainlink. So yeah, it looks like their uh, price appreciation can go up pretty fast. On top of that, I also like to make mention of uh, some what's been going on uh, with the market as far as price. And it makes a lot of sense. I mean, look at this. Look at what we have here. I mean, this is we're on the four hour candles and this is on 20th October at 12. We went from, like I said, 63, 63, 6 all the way to 67, 3. That's an amazing four hour run. And then, of course, from there, you know, we take a look at the RSI, a little overbought. And then the volume's looking pretty good as far as like like MACD and what's going on. But then there it turns from this red, which it could go either way, honestly, then a little bit downward. And then we see that uh, volume is, is uh, going down, MACD is decreasing a little bit, and then we can confirm it here, and then boom, it takes off right here. So, and then as we're going through over this way, we can see that, you know, 62, 60, 63 or something like that. If you would have caught it here, you could have, uh, you know, sold off right as it uh, goes from dark green to light green, sold it off at around 65, bought back in around 63, and then, uh, yeah, you can be playing around pretty well. So that's for all you traders out there. I'm not a big trader. I'm a, just a holder. But that's what the traders tell me. And then also, if we take a look at uh, real quick about the shorts and longs, I'm always interested to see what the thought process is with everybody in the market. And this is BYBT.com. Takes a look at all the longs and the shorts. And we can see right here in the last 12 hours, uh, we're actually gaining on people actually starting to short a little bit, especially on Bitfinex, 59%. But it all depends on the time frame. Look at, uh, let's go to 12, 24 hours, see where we're at. Yeah, same thing. And uh, I mean, if we go into the danger territory, this is not gonna look good. 30 minutes, yeah, it's gonna be a ton of, uh, ton of shorts. So uh, just expect volatility, surprise in crypto, that is what it is. But uh, that's what's going on in the market. Let me just think about it in the comment section, but I mean, not surprising. Pullbacks are healthy. We've had a massive run. Let's see how we do. Anyhow, let's get into this uh, ETH Wales game. And this was a good one from you today. And really just takes takes the data from sentiment analysis. And it talks about this. Let me blow this up. Top Ethereum wallets have been adding Ethereum steadily since August and keep doing so even as the price is approaching the all-time high in May. I, I found this fascinating because, you know, when whales get in, usually they are the sp usually not all the time there's some dumb whales out there let's just be honest but usually you'll have whales and they'll accumulate when nobody's doing it and that's the hard work what i talked about yesterday the hard work's not now the hard work is done uh four or five years ago or actually around september when nobody wants to buy there's a huge dip and people don't do that you do that i do that but a lot of people don't and these whales are accumulating back then, but they're still accumulating right now. And that's what's interesting. 
And this was the data uh, brought most from sentiment on uh, on-chain analysis. I'm gonna blow this up. Let me put this up a little bit higher so you can see it. We can see that in, this is just uh, Ethereum billionaires addresses are, are, the, are the big ETH players, we'll say. And 2.5% uh, of ETH supply in the last 10 weeks, and they're just accumulating and accumulating and accumulating. And I think to myself, I'm like, well, are these exchange wallets? Are these like exchanges? Are these like legit just whales? But I mean, we can see it on chain. It shows us exactly what we're talking about here. They're just accumulating and accumulating. So the question is then, if we're at 42, 4,100, some of our all-time highs for as far as Ethereum, and they're still accumulating, what do they know that we don't know? That's the big question. And it's uh, something to think about uh, for you to, of course, do your own research and see if uh, Ethereum might be something you want to add. And then here's the answer to my question. Non-exchange ETH whales hold 5X more ETH than whales on exchanges. The ETH holdings of the former, uh, which is uh, uh, non-exchange whales, are actually people who have wallets on, on, uh, on exchanges. Uh, now total 22.9 million Ethereum. That's a lot of Ethereum compared to only 4.6 million ETH stored in addresses based on crypto exchanges or inside crypto exchanges. So if we take a look at what's going on, I mean, these whales, again, are accumulating like crazy. And the question is then, why are they doing it? And should we be accumulating more? It's up to you. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Now you know exactly what they're doing. Now let's move on. So we got that. And then on top of this, I found this story interesting because everybody's got their opinion i've got my own opinion about why price appreciation is going through and i think it's a number of factors well here's what jp morgan thinks as far as like this huge price appreciation take this with a grain of salt we'll just say that so jp morgan names the trigger uh for this new all-time high and this is what they say i found this kind of funny strategists of jp morgan uh say that the most likely reason for the bitcoin all-time high has been inflation or people that are worried about inflation. When I first read that, I'm like, that's not the reason. But then I sat back, I go, nah, it's actually a pretty good reason. And and th I'll get to that in a second, but I think there's a combination of a many factors, right? We have an ETF that took off. I was a little bit uh, worried about what it could do uh, because of the last CBOE futures contract. I know it wasn't an ETF, I understand that, but I was just a little concerned, so I kind of, kind of stepped back, but it was a massive success so far. Um, and so you take, you take what's going on there, you take the economy and the hedge uh, as far as like inflation and the markets themselves, and of course, and of course, inflation. I think you combine all those things, and then uh, people talk about it like crazy. I think here we are. So to, fin to finish this up, this means this means Bitcoin is rising due to monetary access. Comments chief economist at Tresis, Daniel Lacalle. I think I nailed that. Oh, I'm not even going to try this guy's name. Nikolau something. And the banks of the strategist wrote that an ETF launch was unlikely to attract a lot of new capital into the leading digital asset. They have been watching cash moving out of gold ETFs and into Bitcoin since the start of September. And then the rest, they just kind of, it gets boring after that. But that is true. Uh, I've been hearing the same thing as far as like gold ETFs and people moving out of gold and into Bitcoin because it's essentially gold 2.0. Now, I don't understand what the big deal is with the uh, gold bugs, uh, but uh, I own gold, I own silver, and I own Bitcoin. Why don't you just own all of them and just hedge your bet? Uh, I think that uh, we can all agree on that. At least some of us can. Some gold bugs just will not give me that. And then I was thinking about it. I'm like, well, you know, if we're taking a look at how much is actually taking out of gold. Remember, gold has around, it says 10.9 trillion. This is from last year. But uh, every one of these little squares is about, I think, 100 billion. And uh, gold's got about $12 trillion. So everything that's being taken out of gold and into Bitcoin, what do you think would happen when half of the gold, people that are in gold, go into cryptocurrencies, digital assets, such as Bitcoin and everything else, and Ethereum, and blah, blah, blah. Well, now you got... Well, let's say you got six trillion in gold still, but you got six more trillion <laughs> into the crypto assets. And then look at this. Here's the stock market. That's about 90 trillion. Now it's about 100. Here's the money supply, global debt. And remember, each one of these squares is uh, 100 billion. Here's real estate. Just imagine when we tokenize that. Global wealth and then derivatives. <laughs> I mean, it's just laughable about uh, how early we are and how big we can actually be. So that's what's going on with that one. And uh, let me know what you think about it in the comment section. When I see, every time I see that, this diagram, I always get, or this this chart, I always get excited because I'm like, 
There's so much money to be had, and there's so many people that can get into this. They just don't know it yet. Anyhow, let's move on to our next piece. Gensler. <laughs> Gary Gensler from the SEC, head of the SEC, and his rationale as to why he approved this ETF. Because, again, I didn't think it was going to happen, but here we are. I talked about why that whole uh, thing was, but this was a just a quick snippet of why Gensler said this, and I want to open a discussion about this because, to me, it doesn't make any sense. So Chairman Gary Gensler, the peep, the man that we all love to hate in crypto. I don't hate him. He's just doing his job. And uh, it's debatable about uh, his motives. I, I don't want to get into that because I don't want to get sued. He states, uh, what you have here is a product that's been overseen for four years, talking about crypto, digital assets, Bitcoin, by the U.S. Federal Regulator, Regulator CFTC. And that's being wrapped inside of something with our jurisdiction called the Investment Company Act of 1940. So we have some ability to bring it inside of investors' protection. <clears throat> it's still a highly speculative asset class and listeners should understand that underneath this, it still has that same aspect of volatility and speculation. So here's my question to you watching this video. The whole point of the SEC is for consumer protection. What are they doing with this ETF to protect the consumer? They're just approving it, right? Is there... Because, I mean, the big thing about this is like, well, we don't want manipulation. Is there no manipulation going on uh, in these markets, in gold and metals and everything else? Is there no manipulation going on in the stock market? How are they protecting us per se in this little arena as compared to the different exchanges that are, are out there right now, uh, like a Coinbase, like a Voyager, like a Gemini, everything else? Like, what are they specifically doing besides getting a paycheck? I just don't, I, I don't understand it. And uh, I'm just not that smart. So I'm I'm leaning, relying on you guys to gals to help me exactly with that. But on top of that, there was also uh, this little quote. This is from um, uh, from Anthony Bertolino, VP of Growth at iTrust. iTrust is that uh, square that you've always seen in the upper left-hand corner, tax-free crypto IRA. And he says this. This was a quote from CNBC or on CNBC. He says, the launch of the first Bitcoin ETF in the U.S. will bolster the broader crypto market and help an entirely new investor class experience the benefits of Bitcoin as a legitimate asset. I don't know exactly what he's talking about here because I got to, I'll ask him. Uh, however, a derivative based Bitcoin ETF is not where we want to be long term. I agree. I think the futures is uh, just a stepping stone until we get spot. One of the most attractive aspects of Bitcoin is that it's a bearer asset, high liquidity 24 7. A physically backed, backed Bitcoin ETF will be 10 years from now. So, what I want to do is I want to bring Anthony in here to explain exactly what he's talking about in that first part. And if he really believes that it's going to be 10 years. And then the big question I have is if people, if, if there's investors out there and they're like, well, I don't really get this. And you know, I, I don't want to custody it because I got a lot of money. I don't want to have a lot of risk. Why wouldn't they just put into like a crypto IRA, like with iTrust? So we're going to talk to Anthony real quick, and then we'll get to the story about Michael Burry and him not shorting and picking up crypto. So let's jump right in with Anthony. So anyhow, as promised, let's uh, we got Anthony Bertolino in here. He is the uh, the VP of Growth at iTrust Capital. Anthony, thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. Thank you so much, Rob. Excited to see you. Yes, been a time, been some time. So here, I had two questions for you. Uh, the first thing, as we get into it, was you were talking about uh, you know people getting into this ETF. But to me, the same people that are getting to, into the ETF. The big thing is they don't want to custody it. They're used to a certain type of uh, structure. So why couldn't they just go into like an iTrust, have you guys custody it? It's a Roth IRA or a SEP or a traditional whatever else. So why couldn't they just do that as opposed to this uh, futures ETF? Yeah, so many, many people who are buying this futures-based ETF probably should be using iTrust Capital and certainly could be for those who are doing it within their retirement accounts. And yeah. right now, I think it's really just a learning gap. They're maybe not aware of iTrust Capital or they feel more comfortable with, with Goldman Sachs charging them high fees. And so I think over time, they'll discover <laughs> our product and they'll see that it's more superior. Perfect. Okay. So people just don't know about it yet. That's, that's uh, kind of like my job to get them to, to understand it. Okay. And then the, the next one, the second one was, you said that there's going to be a physically backed ETF in like a decade or so. Do you think it's going to take that long or do you think it's going to be shorter? And just talk to us real quick about that. Yeah. So I think a physical, a real Bitcoin based ETF will be, will certainly be much sooner. Uh, my comment was more along the lines of like over the long term, people mm -hmm. are not going to be happy to have a futures based ETF. And no yeah. matter how quickly the spot base comes, we'll see 
But ultimately, the, the best thing to do is to have true physical ownership of Bitcoin, which is what we prioritize. No derivative, no mm -hmm. notes. And the reason why is you're going to be able to take that Bitcoin and use it in things like DeFi, right? Where you can deposit it into an open source DeFi protocol, earn yield, maybe borrow from it. And that will never happen with a Bitcoin ETF. Yeah. And then uh, lastly, yeah, makes, I mean, nobody, it would be nice to get an ETF or like a real spot ETF that is actually physically backed, but here we are. And then the last thing, before we came on, you told me something that I was like, there's no way that that's uh, real on iTrust and the future of iTrust potentially going into like what you can do with like Bitcoin and the crypto that you actually hold. Yeah. So our vision or my vision at least certainly is within the product offering for you to be able to have an earned section. And within that earn section, you should be able to choose how you want to use your assets. So the future is not to just have your st uh, assets stored in cold storage, but you to have the option of using that to maybe do staking, to maybe do lending, to maybe use DeFi. And what's so crazy is that all of this will be happening within your tax sheltered account. So the interest you're earning will likely be still be tax deferred or tax free, depending on the shelter, the staking yield, et cetera. Now, we're, we're looking at this very intently on the product technology side, which is basically ready to go. Then the other side, the reason why it's taking so long is sort of regulatory landscape. And we're going to release more content on this in the future. But you've seen the SEC, you know, talking to BlockFi, talking to Celsius, talking to Nexo, a lot of these things happening in you know, New York AG and all these regulatory agencies. So we're having our legal team look at this and we're trying to roll this out as soon as possible. And I think it's very exciting what's going to be happening to real crypto holders over the next five to 10 years when they have places to use it. That's crazy. All right. So just so you know, there is a link in the description for iTrust Capital. Get a first 30 days free. I did a video about 20 minutes or so, which explains the difference between the SEP, the traditional and the Roth. But remember, if you go into the Roth IRA, it is uh, tax exempt. Essentially, whatever you put in, of course, you get taxed. But after that, whatever it grows to, you can do the whole Peter Thiel Roth IRA route and uh, get out uh, some fantastic gains. And on top of that, just remember that they got a ton of different crypto that you can uh, purchase over there or actually get into. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Chainlink, Polkadot, uh, Cardano, Bitcoin Cash, Stellar, EOS, Aave, Solana, Curve DAO, Maker, Tezos, Engine, Basic Tension, Sushi, and a bunch of other stuff. So check out that link in the description below. And that is it. Anthony, thanks for coming on, man. We appreciate it. Thank you, Rob. Good talking to you, my man. Great. So I hope that helps. And uh, Anthony, thanks for coming by. Let's uh, get into our last story, which is Michael Burry. <laughs> and I I saw this yesterday and I tweeted out and I just said, man, everybody's a fan, aren't they? Everybody's a fan of everything's going up. But this is the big short uh, famous gentleman, Michael Burry, where he says he's not, let me see if I can get this in here. He's not, he's not betting against crypto and really about a couple of coins. So uh, this is from Yahoo Finance, take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> He, say, he states this, I've not been shorting crypto at all. Uh, I have not been involved in them except for a dabble, actually on the long side in a couple that I see as better cryptocurrencies. And I have looked everywhere for exactly what he's talking about here, but it's not in this article. It's not in CNBC. So I'm curious to see like what he invested into. I reached out to some friends and they said that he has invested into Ethereum and that's all I can get. But I know he says a couple of currencies, cryptocurrencies. So if you find that out, let me know. But what's interesting to me is that he had deleted some tweets where he had talked about how he was asking like, how do you short crypto? What do you do? Where can I do this? What's going on? And I actually talked about this a couple of weeks ago and then all of a sudden he just deletes it. And that's where the whole story came from. But he came on record to say, I'm not shorting them. And I think that some cryptos are pretty well. He still thinks things are a bubble, but it's not like he's like, this is the worst of all time and I'm going to short the living tar out of it. That's not what he's saying. Now he's saying, hey, looking pretty good and I'm going to get on this bandwagon. So again, as things go up, everybody seems to be a big fan and uh, that's pretty much how it goes. So look, uh, that is it for today and uh, that's all we have. It's a lot of information, uh, but that ETH whale story, it makes me think that really I should be maybe dollar cost averaging more into Ethereum. Not investment advice, just investment opinion of what I should do. And that's it. So if you made it all the way to the end, thanks so much. I appreciate it. If you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. And right now things are going, they're going to accelerate at a rapid pace. So get as much information as you can from as many trustworthy sources as you possibly can. And hopefully that's me or one of them. So thanks so much. I appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one.